repertoire is very important. Of course, a good teacher can advise you on that, but you also have to understand your own voice. Um, so uh, choosing the right repertoire and understanding your own voice. And that, there's only one way you can do that, and that's through getting in the practice room, practicing every day, experimenting with your voice, understanding if you have coloratura, if you don't have coloratura, coloratura is agility in your voice. Uh, when they say someone's a coloratura soprano, it doesn't, uh, it can be a coloratura mezzo too. Coloratura is just the agility you have in your voice. These are all things that you find out through working with your own voice. And there are certain things that maybe right away you can't achieve them. But through practice and through knowing what you're doing, you can get results from your own voice that maybe you didn't think you had in your voice. So it's important also to experiment with your own voice. I remember uh, I sang a uh, Laudate Dominum, a Mozart Laudate Dominum years ago in Salzburg for the festival. And when I first looked at it, I thought, I'll never be able to sing that. And I worked and I worked and I worked and I sang it beautifully and easily at the end. It took a long time, but, you know, that gave me such a sense of achievement and gratification. And where do you think that, that discipline that you have comes from? How was that instilled in you or is that something that you feel is your own well, part of way it. of working? I think if you really want to improve, if you want to be a singer, you're willing to, you have to be willing to put the time in, to be disciplined. I, I ask that because we live in a culture now where it's everything's immediate. Instant gratification. Instant gratification, you know, information straight away and working with young singers as I do all the time, it's quite difficult to instill this into them that it's not something that's done to you, it's something that you have to participate in and, and really work hard at and be prepared to be patient and take the time. Would you agree with that? Well, absolutely. It takes time and it takes time even for your own uh, vocal apparatus to adapt to a new role. When I, whenever I would study something new, I would, it would take a lot of time to get it in your voice. We say in your voice, but there is a process and you have to also enjoy the process, not just the result at the end. You have to be willing to put in the hours and hours like a runner, you know, like any kind of athlete. Being a singer is being an athlete. Your body has to be fit. You have to be prepared to, you know, uh, work your muscles, work your diaphragm, you know, train. It's, it's training. And it's anybody that gets up on a stage and sings something and it looks so easy. It's because there are hours and hours of work behind it and technique and that's where your technique of course when you get out on the stage you're not saying this is my technique you're saying I'm an, you know I'm an artist I'm interpreting it and you don't want people to look at your technique you want them to see you as an artist but the technique is very important because that's what enables you to sing the pieces that's what enables you to negotiate your passaggio and your voice so that it's seamless that's what enables you to get to your high notes um, when you're singing a high note, it's not about the high note. It's about everything you've done before exactly. then. <laughs> Your high note is like a consequence. Yes. It's like the result of everything else you've done before then. One of the amazing things about Pavarotti, who I had the honor and the privilege of, of studying with for almost nine years, his voice was almost like a computer, you know. Um, you would plug in a certain note, and that note would always come out in the same place, in the same way. Um, and that was the amazing thing about his technique, is that it was so solid. His passaggio, his Fs were always the same F, you know. Um, I'm getting probably a little technical here. But if you can get to the point where your own technique is very solid, it's very freeing because it frees you up to think about a lot of other things mm -hmm. that you need to be able to think about on a stage. I, following on from that, then I have to 
ask you about Pavarotti because um, I understand that uh, you met him at a masterclass that you were singing and he was very impressed with your voice and I think I've seen a lovely little clip where he says you were his only student and how he was impressed with you so to be discovered in a way like that and then catapulted into big roles and the stage that must have been very daunting as well as thrilling could you tell us a little bit about that experience well I, I don't think I was necessarily the best voice in that master class or anything but I had one specific advantage at that particular time I, I already spoke Italian I studied Italian in college, and uh, he needed somebody at the time to answer his fan mail. So I had a little bit of an edge there. You know, it was like, come and work for me, answer my fan mail. You that must have been extensive. <laughs> it, was, it, was, <laughs> it was, because those were the days where you actually had to write something. Good Lord. <laughs> I'd get him to sign it and then put it into a post office box. Nowadays, everything's online. But... But yes, okay, I had an, a fantastic opportunity at a very early stage in my career. It was lucky, but it was a double-edged sword because when you are taken under the wing of somebody as famous and important as Luciano Pavarotti, you, the pressure is enormous. You have to be 10 times as good as anybody else or anybody, you know, because people, want you to have earned that privilege. Yes. They say, why did she get to be there? Sure. And, you know, I was a pretty young girl at the time, and, you know, there was a lot of gossip around it. So I knew whenever I would sing with him, which I did do very, very often, um, I felt that the guns were all pointed on me. So there was a lot of pressure, and um, as the years went through those years, I always felt that my credibility as an artist was always... Mm in question. Um, so I had to really, I studied like crazy. I felt that I had to earn the mm. privilege that I had. Uh, but the pressure was always on and I felt that I was being judged twice as harshly as I would have been had I just been any normal young singer that wasn't the lucky one that got to sing with Pavarotti. Mm. Yes, because I can imagine that that sort of scrutiny when you were developing your voice still and developing yeah, your technique and growing, growing into, into roles, that's, you know, nobody has to cope with that. So, Well, I made my debut singing Mimi in La Boheme with him. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm laughing because... <laughs> I was terrified. Amazing. I was terrified. <laughs> you know, oh, I made my debut singing with Pavarotti. Oh, wow, wow. Um, How wonderful. It was in San Diego, California. And, but I was, you know, terrified. But luckily, I had prepared so well uh, because I had basically been spoon-fed the role, note by note, measure by measure, by Luciano and by two of the best coaches in Milano. Mm. One was Antonio Tonini who at the time was quite on in his years. Um, but he had been uh, Maria Callas's uh, repetiteur. She learned all her roles with him. And Schwarzkopf and a lot of really important singers. He worked with all the singers at La Scala. And by another uh, gentleman who at the time was really old. Well, so he seemed to me. He was probably my age at that time. But <laughs> No, I think he was older, actually. I think he was about 70 at the time. Um, but his name was Roberto Benaglio, and he'd been the chorus master at La Scala for many years. Mm. And I also worked very closely with him. And with John Wussman, who was, you know, at that time I was working with Luciano, and, and I was on the road a lot with mm -hmm. him. And uh, whenever we would work, because he said to me basically, you know, you work for me, and I will help you with your voice. And to this day, I think I'm really his only student, which is quite well, that's what he quite said. An honor. He's <laughs> quite a responsibility. Absolutely. I mean, he's had lots of other young singers mm. under his tutelage through his competition mm. and things. But I really studied with him, and he was a very, very difficult teacher. He was he was no easy peasy. Mm. Did a lot of screaming. I did a lot of crying. You know, I mean, singing is very emotional. <laughs> we all. Because it's so intimate. Mm. Your voice is so 
intimate. It mm. is the most intimate part of our bodies, believe it or not. Um, we are who, who our voice is. It's our strongest means of communication. So, you know, when you're singing, it, you're very vulnerable mm. because you're... It, because you want things to be right, but you know sometimes they're not. It takes it takes a lot of work. Anyway, I'm getting off track here. But, did, uh, but did I would it... work with him uh, on the road, mm. and uh, so I had some good training. So when I got to the performance, I mm. I had also tried out the end of the last act, the uh, the arias and duets. We yeah. done them in concert before I actually had mm. my 